Greetings, this is Craddock, and today I'll be going over some condemn based builds that use Furnace. So Furnace in particular has been a sticking point for me. I hadn't been able to find any condemn build that I quite liked that used Furnace. I'll showcase a few builds today that are very good, very well-tuned uh, speed builds that use Furnace. Uh, the first one I'm going to go into is uh, the Holy Room. Uh, and this build today is actually SVR's build. SVR is a very well-known theory crafter in the Diablo community, and I do hope you check out this build and his other builds. So go and check him out. I will link his YouTube channel, and he's very active on Twitch. So go check him out on Twitch, give him a follow, give him a like, uh, and let him know that you are there to support him. Uh, this particular build is fairly well-rounded, especially at higher paragon, I will say. Uh, I'm going to go over some of the skills real quick. Provoke, too scared to run, reduces attack speed of enemies, slows them, and also provides a means of wrath uh, generation in the build, um, on, on a cooldown, of course. Um, but this uh, is very useful for pylon spawns. Sometimes those fast attacking elites come out, you're able to slow their attack speed, and it's kind of nice to have, uh, especially against the Rift Guardian uh, as well. The Wrath uh, Generation bridges the gap because your Laws of Valor will not always be up. Having some other means of Wrath Generation is quite nice to have in this build. Uh, the Laws of Valor, of course, extended by Long Arm of the Law to get that increased duration. Uh, it'll be up about 80-85%, somewhere in there, uh, uptime. Huge benefit in this build for Wrath Cost Reduction, allowing you to spam your Condemn and all of your attacks uh, as as you need them on, you know, on autocast, basically. Which is quite nice. Holy is a very effective rune to use because it has the vacuum, which sucks in enemies and pulls enemies closer to you, making it really easy to A, dispense with trash, B, leverage those Oculus spawns, Oculus, of course, being the ring you use on your follower. Uh, it's also just uh, very good in general for when you get those ranged elite packs that don't like to, to group up. Uh, Condemn Vacuum will be able to suck them in and kill them quicker than you would otherwise. So, very good rune. Uh, Condemn Vacuum also functions as a slight uh, defensive mechanism, I will say. Uh, instead of enemies hitting you right off the bat, they get pulled which kind of like uh, disrupts them, I'll say. So they're not immediately focusing on hitting you rather than you know having to recover from being pulled. So that's a quite, quite a nice uh, benefit there. This build, uh, of course, we're using Finery and Heavenly Strength, uh, pretty standard for the setup. Uh, for movement, uh, we're using Sword of Justice, Iron Skin Flash, and Wreath of Lightning, which is, which is quite good. Um, for, for mobility. I will say uh, you can swap in powerful with this build, but having the Wreath of Lightning in particular is very good for, for mobility. Um, for defense in this setup, we are going with the Prophet Room on Akarat's Champion. It gives you that huge toughness boost via the armor gain. It, this also provides the second life in the build, since we don't have a second life passive. Quite nice. Holy Cause for increased holy damage, and recovery, health recovery in the build. So this is a very nice passive to use because it offers both offense and a, a means of health recovery, life recovery. Uh, defense in the build, other defensive items, we're using String of Ears for the melee damage reduction in combination with the Esoteric Alteration. Works very well to let you take on any Rift Guardian, any sort of elite um, that you come across in the game. We are using the Leorx Crown in the cube, and um, normally you would wear the Furnace. I'm My particular test setup, I'm just wearing a Blade of Prophecy because I didn't have an, a non-ancient um, Furnace, so let's just say I'm wearing the Blade of Prophecy for that <laughs> reason. Uh, Leorx Crown, though, gives you higher cooldown in this build, so it feels the build feels a little bit better because you're wearing the Leorx Crown cooldown-wise. Uh, we're using Double Unity, uh, with the token on the follower, of course, to give us that extra buffer of defense. Um, trapped for extra damage. Multiplier here. 
And that's pretty much it. The illusory boots, fairly mandatory with this setup because we don't have any other means of moving through enemies. And you don't want to get stuck between Waller Elites and that sort of thing. You will die if you don't have these equipped in this particular build. That's why they're in the build. Uh, but anyway, this is a very good setup, especially um, Higher Paragon for Higher Paragon. I found it works very well. Um, lower Paragon though, you may want to make a few swaps and I'll detail those right now. Um, I found that these two movement abilities, Sword of Justice and Iron Skin Flash, uh, Sword of Justice is harder to keep up uh, as, as a signature skill. It, it only stacks individually and it's very specific on the point of hitting your target. Uh, it can be a little bit harder to maintain. Uh, Flash, in particular, because we're using the Vacuum Rune on Condemned, again, those enemies, they get disrupted, and also, it's not going to be up on every rift. So rifts that you have ranged monsters, this will be up fairly often and give you that huge mobility boost. But on rifts that are, like, mostly melee-type, slow-attacking monsters uh, that wouldn't even normally hit you, it's going to be a problem as far as uptime on this ability, uh, and it's kind of wasted in my opinion. When I tested this at lower Paragon, what I did is swapped into higher defense. So I went with the Iron Skin Steel Skin, and I also went with the Slash Guard Rune for that extra armor boost. To let me get through the Rift, especially at lower Paragon, it felt more consistent, and the Wreath of Lightning in this build being the most consistent movement bonus, I kept that in place. So one of the huge benefits of this build is being able to put Condemn Damage on both not only your, your chest and shoulder piece, but also your shield. While I don't have it rolled on this particular shield, um, instead of Wrath Regen, I could, could confidently put the additive Condemn Damage on the shield, and that would work just beautifully. Um, other rolls, of course, you want pretty much perfect, as close as you can get to perfect cooldown on gear. You want to have over 56.5% gives you a little bit of a buffer to have permanent acrobats at a minimum uh, as far as cooldown is concerned and then of course while my amulet does not have holy you would want holy on the bracer, holy on the necklace. And that's about it um, as far as gearing uh, particulars are concerned. A little bit of extra pickup radius never hurts for a speed build so keep that in mind. Um, I was running uh, GR84 in uh, four to five minutes with this particular build uh, being closer to the uh, four to four and a half minute range rather than the four and a half to five minute range. So this is closer to four minutes uh, as far as clear speed, mostly due to the, the vacuum rune and it just being a very well-rounded setup. Um, even with it being slightly slower moving if you opt to swap out the defense or uh, less defensive if you opt to go with the extra movement it seems to do very well in greater risk as far as the speed build. So if you're looking for one of the best uh, setups you can go with as far as solo um, greater rifting this is probably it. Now despite the the Holy Rune being very good, I actually quite enjoyed testing this Fire Rune Condemn build that uses the Furnace. So it's a very similar setup to the Holy, it just leverages a few different skills to get a balance of um, offense, defense recovery, uh, resource cost reduction, and movement. Um, even more so than the Holy Rune. With the Holy Rune, you kind of have to choose between the defense and the mobility. Well, with this one, you can get it all, and it just feels so smooth to play. Very, very comfortable build to play. Slightly slower clears with the Fire Rune. Uh, closer, to, still within four to five minutes on those GR84s, but closer to the the four and a half to five minute range rather than the four to four and a half minute range, meaning this build is somewhere in, somewhere in the range of 20 to 30 seconds slower on average as compared to the Holy Rune, but it does feel more comfortable to play because of the increased balance within the build. So this is something I think I will prefer playing over the Holy Rune as far as a furnace build is concerned, So and, and I hope you like this build as well. So there are a few differences here as compared to the 
the holy version, the main one being the rune on condemn reciprocate, no longer pulls enemies in, but instead uh, charges up your condemn casts as you take damage. So 50% um, of all damage taken while the explosion is building is added to the damage of the explosion, meaning that if you're in, if you're under duress, if you're taking more damage, you will in turn start dealing more damage. It is quite nice. You do notice the extra damage uh, when you're playing in the build and you're, say, engaging multiple elite packs starting to take more damage. Uh, very nice to have that extra damage there to kind of boost the clear speed of the build. That said, I don't think it's as good as the pull, but it's very cool and the spell effect on the fire rune is quite lovely to uh, view and enjoy. It actually gets more red, I think, as you take more damage, which is pretty cool. Uh, if I can, <laughs> in my opinion, it's very cool spell effect. Uh, the other thing here is the trick. Since we're using the fire rune to manage resources, we're wearing the cinder coat. So the cinder coat gives us that extra fire resource cost reduction, which will manage the resource cost reduction in the build for the most part. I'm going to say for the most part. There's a caveat here. Uh, it doesn't quite manage it entirely. Uh, to fully manage it, you have to slot extra resource cost reduction on gear or wrath per second recovery. Um, in particular, it's going to require a resource cost reduction rule on your shoulder piece, which is a minor detriment to the build because, of course, you are losing then a slot where you could be putting condemn damage cool thing in here is we still have most everything that the holy build had before. We have that melee damage reduction from String of Ears, the defense from the Esoteric, we have the increased cool, uh, cooldown from the Leoric's Crown and the Cube, the double unity, um, very comfortable setup. The cool thing with the extra Cinder Coat uh, resource cost reduction is this gives us a little bit of leeway for, to place a different law. So instead of going Unstoppable Force, we're going to go Wings of Angels, which gives us that extra 50% movement speed. It lets us run through enemies, also gives us a minor shield and some life per second, which is quite nice for the survivability and uh, also helps you itemize. Instead of Illusory Boots, we can fit in the Cinder Coat. And the Cinder Coat also lets us put in that extra fire percent on gear, which is a boost to the damage of the build. Another boost to damage, since we don't need the Wreath of Lightning any longer, we definitely are going to go Bane of the Powerful to help boost the damage. Uh, it's a 20% damage multiplier. It also gives us that elite damage reduction and elite extra elite damage on top of the elite damage that you already get from the Furnace. So this is a hefty combination of things that you're able to fit in the build simply because you don't have to run the illusory boots anymore and you don't have to run the 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 wrath um, resource cost reduction uh, law uh, downside here is you don't get the 10 percent damage from holy cause so it's kind of a trade-off i mean you do get bane of the powerful but it's not we're losing a lot of additive damage on gear uh, anywhere from 15 to 30 percent as far as additive condemn damage and we're also losing the 10 percent from holy cause so it's still kind of a wash in in that sense as far as damage is concerned uh, the last passive i've chosen here since we still have the profit rune for that second life i am going with wrathful and uh, wrathful is going to give us it's pretty much almost the same as a um, wrath spent uh, points per wrath spent heals you and you can actually get this on your gear uh, for example on my shield here if I look right now I can see uh, life per wrath spent is an affix it's pretty much the same thing except when you use the passive two things you're able to um, it doesn't take up an affix slot, number one, so you can use your affix slot on your shield for something else, and number two, or your weapon, for, for example, uh, but you also get this secondary effect. Heal amount is increased by 1% of your health globe bonus, 
this isn't reflected on the tooltip of the passive skill itself, but it is reflected, I think, on your sheet uh, in the life harassment category. So you see I have one extra health globe healing bonus roll on my gear, which is very low, uh, but my life harassment went up to 1600 as opposed to the 1340 that is specified on the passive. So you can see how stacking, you know, three to four of secondary rolls for health globe healing bonus can be hugely beneficial to the health recovery of this setup. And you can get it somewhere in the range of 2600 uh, life harassment health harassment, which is quite nice. And since this setup is spending a lot of wrath, um, it's a fairly balanced amount, uh, you will be recovering a lot of health from that passive. I think it's the best passive uh, for this slot, and I was actually quite surprised that this was because it's sort of an under underestimated, um, not highly used passive, but it actually worked out quite well. Of course, if you have a different opinion, you can swap around the build, probably use some alternate passes, might be indestructible, um, maybe Divine Fortress, if you're, you know, but probably indestructible is the only alternative here. Uh, I quite like the Wrathful, though. And the trick here is that we are actually, uh, the passive Wrathful is of more use because we are spending more wrath than if we had the Laws of Valor Unstoppable Force equipped. Because this has higher RCR, it wouldn't recover as much life. But since we're sitting more in the 42 to 46% RCR range, um, it's not calculated because I'm including the Cinder Coat in that, but uh, s since you're somewhere in that uh, range, it will be, uh, you will be spending more wrath. Um, this is an argument. Uh, there are two two uh, affixes you could go with on the shield. You could go wrath regeneration, so wrath per second, which is what I've opted for here. You can get up to two, I believe, two wrath per second. Um, and the argument for this would be that you would be spending more, and you would just be recovering wrath as opposed to um, having more resource cost reduction, which would then ro lower the amount of life you would recover recover from Wrathful. But in my opinion, uh, resource cost reduction on your shield in place place of Wrath regeneration would actually work very well in this setup, um, reducing the costs of your your uh, Kingdom cast. Uh, either 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 affix sh would be fine on the shield here. Uh, but again, another downside, because we have to roll one of those two on the shield, is that we can't roll Condemned Damage here. So you're losing Condemned Damage here, and then if you're low Paragon, you're definitely losing at least one Condemned Damage roll between your chest piece and your shoulders. Um, I guess let's move into affixes now. Alright, so moving on to affixes, this particular build, similar to the Holy version, does require a lot of cooldown. You're going to want cooldown on shoulder, gloves, both rings, the sword, the shield, very similar. Also diamond and the helmet, and cooldown on paragon. The difficulty with the fire uh, runed build is that it also has specific gearing requirements that make it harder to acquire pieces for the build. So, a uh, little bit easier to play, a little bit harder to acquire, so if you're keen on doing this, that's one of the downsides, but it is a very smooth build to play uh, because of it. So putting the extra resource cost reduction required on shoulder piece, you're going to need either Wrath per second, or you could put RCR in place of the Wrath per second here on shield. Um, for lower Paragon, you're going to want one of the two. You're either going to want Condemn Damage on your shoulder piece, where I currently have all resist, or you're going to want Condemn Damage on your chest. This is because since you are at lower Paragon, you're going to want some level of vitality on your gear. Uh, whichever one you put Condemn Damage on, the other slot that I just mentioned, you will put vitality. So if I have Condemn Damage on my shoulder, I'll put vitality on the chest piece. If I have Condemned Damage on the chest piece, I'll put Vitality on the shoulder. Um, 
higher paragon this isn't as much an issue and you can just put condemn damage on both and then run uh, vitality extra vitality in paragon because you have the extra paragon to do that so there's a little bit uh, uh, play you can to work around with here with the build um, another option for higher paragon is going with all resist uh, on the shoulder piece as a defensive affix most of the time though uh, vitality will be the, the superior option um, but yeah uh, one of the cooler things here is because we have the cinder coat we have that increased elemental damage so instead of 40% max we have a maximum of 60% uh, you have 5% on chest piece on bracer and of course on the um, amulet uh, in place of strength that I have now you want crit crit a damage of course on the amulet shoulder piece or sorry the helm I meant I meant uh, and then the gloves of course the rings both of them uh, I prefer not to have strength but because we are using finery strength isn't such a detriment to have on the, the rings but uh, yeah I, I would prefer to see uh, crit crit hit damage here as perfect rolls um, as far as the weapon is concerned uh, damage percent and strength since we are using finery would be the the largest boost of the build uh, let's see let's see uh, defensive affixes you're probably going to want um, all resist on your belt in place of armor that I have now so it would be strength, vite, all resist, life percent. You want all resist on your pants. You also want all resist on your boots. Um, you could opt for that fourth affix on the boots. You could opt for either life per second or armor. I've been enjoying the increased life per second, but uh, armor would also be an okay, okay roll as well. It just depends on what you prefer at that point. Uh, the boots I have now are missing that all resist though, so that's kind of a detriment. Uh, one of the huge things, because uh, if you are running the Wrathful passive, the heal amount being increased increased by the health globe bonus is a very cool itemization mechanic in my opinion, but it also puts a strain on finding the correct items. Uh, this affix can come on your uh, boots, I believe on the chest piece, on the shoulders, on the rings and on the shield. You might want to double check that, but I believe those are the pieces that it can come on. As far as where to put it, I would say the rings are probably one of the better places. Uh, boots, pretty good place. Um, shoulder piece is a great place to put it uh, as well. Uh, shield is an okay place. Uh, it's debatable whether the, the Max Wrath here would be more useful or just having another secondary resist roll would be very useful as well. So I'd say shield a little bit less uh, useful of placement. Chest as well a little bit less useful simply because you can roll either secondary resist on the chest or you can roll um, what's it called? Uh, not pick up radius, but uh, reduce damage from ranged attacks or melee attacks in particular. You can roll those on your amulet, uh, helmet, and I can't remember. No, probably not the helmet, but your, at least your amulet and your chest piece, you can roll those on, and they are quite nice to have. Bracer, I believe, can roll that as well, but it's more of a trade off, in my opinion, at that point. Uh, those can be some, some nice secondary rolls to have. Of course, uh, on the pieces that you can't get, the increased healing from the health globes you definitely want to go for pickup radius at that point just to have some pickup on your gear so you can so uh, pants would definitely be an excellent place to put pickup radius maybe the belts you know maybe the gloves so you just pick and choose where you can put these affixes uh, my point being it's just a lot harder to gear because of this but it's a lot more fun <laughs> Anyways, that's about it for the Fire Condemn build with the Furnace as far as the solo speed is concerned. Um, very much hope you enjoy this build. It's uh, a very comfortable build, in my opinion. Very fun to play, and uh, definitely a huge change of pace if you were 
looking to play with uh, furnace build but didn't like the downsides of running furnace this might be something for you to look into and I uh, want to thank you for watching I'll roll some more footage of um, the build so if you want to watch that stick around